Hello everyone. Today's tutorial is going to go over the mode button. The mode button is located in the top left hand corner of your graphing calculator right next to the second function button. If you press this button, a menu comes up that shows us all the different settings that we could set our calculator to. Typically at the high school level, we use the first three rows of settings as well as this row down here. What I'm going to do next is go over some ex different examples using the different settings. The first row of settings in the mode menu is the numeric notation settings. In this row we have three choices. We have normal, scientific, and engineering. By default the calculator usually has normal chosen for you, which just means on the home screen when you do any calculations the normal the numbers are going to come out as they normally would. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose scientific notation right now and show you what happens when we have this chosen. I'm going to go back to my home screen and I'm just going to enter in a number 9125. When I hit enter the calculator shows this number in scientific notation. Now normally in scientific notation we have a coefficient times 10 to some exponent. The calculator display shows the coefficient. It does not show times 10, but it does show the exponent. So what I really have in this row right here is the scientific notation 9.125 times 10 to the third. And just to show you that the, these two expressions are equivalent, I'll hit enter again, and you'll see we have the same thing. So no matter how big or how small the number is, as long as you're in scientific mode, your numbers and calculations will always come out in scientific notation. Let me show you what a decimal would look like. Zero, three, two. Hit enter. And it spits it out in scientific notation. Notice here how the exponent is negative. The second row of settings in the mode menu is the decimal settings. The decimal settings control how many decimal places will appear on your calculator. By default, your calculator is set to float, which means the number of decimals that appear will change with each calculation. If one of these numbers is chosen 0 through 9, for example if I chose 2, that just means that two decimals would appear on any calculation that I do. Let's look at an example. I go back to my home screen and I type in 1 divided by 4. The float for 1 fourth is 0.25. That is because that's how far the decimals go out for 1 fourth. On the other hand, if I type in the square root 7, you can see this decimal is a little bit larger and the calculator shows as much decimals as it can for the square root of 7. Now remember, the square root of 7 is an irrational number, so the decimals are never ending. Let's go back to the settings menu and switch our settings to one of the numbers. I'm going to choose 4. Let's go back and look at 1 fourth and square root of 7 again. I'm going to do square root of 7 first so we can compare the two decimals. And you notice now that I only go out four decimals. And also notice that the calculator rounded the 7 up to an 8 because of the 5 that was in the spot next to it. Now let's take a look at 1 fourth again. 1 divided by 4. I hit enter. And notice here, because I told the calculator I want to see four decimals, it goes out four decimals, even if the last two decimals are zeros. The third row of settings in the mode menu is the angle measure settings. There are two choices here, radian and degree. Typically, these are used when you're entering in an angle measure into the graph and calculator. And normally, we use these with the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons. Let's look at an example. If I go back to my home screen and I enter in sine of 30, the calculator default is set to radians. So this will read the sine of 30 radians. When I hit enter, it yields that value right there. Now let's go back and change it 
to degrees. We'll see what happens. If I go back to my home screen and enter in the sine of 30, this is now going to read sine of 30 degrees. And when I hit enter, it yields that value right there. Notice how the values are different. The sine of 30 radians came out to be this value, and the sine of 30 degrees came out to be this value. So it is important to know which mode you're in. And typically, what mode you're in that really depends on the problem. The seventh row of the mode menu is the real or complex settings. There are three choices in this row. Real, rectangular complex, or polar complex settings. Typically at the high school level, we just deal with the real or the rectangular complex settings. By default, your calculator is set to real. This just means that any calculation you do, the calculator will show you real numbers for your answers. Let's look at an example. If I go back to my home screen and I type in the square root of 9, and I hit enter, my answer is 3. And this is because 3 is a real number, and the calculator is going to show us real numbers. However, if I type in the square root of negative 9 and hit enter, I get this error screen, and it says non-real answer. That is because the square root of negative 9 is an imaginary number. And in order to view it, I need to go back to my mode menu and switch my settings to A plus BI. Hit enter. Go back to my home screen. And now if I type in the square root of negative 9, my answer will appear as 3i i being the imaginary unit of the square root of negative 1. And you can even see that here. If I type in the square root of negative 1, that's equal to i.